Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating a wall shelf merged with a shutter design. Now this shelf is made from all wood and it's inspired by two high-end looks that I designed into one fantastic piece. Now I will provide all of the measurements and easy ways to assemble this shelf as well as showing you options to prep and finish your wood and all of the tools that I use. Now as always, all of the projects I create have complete supply lists in the description box so you can easily use it for reference as you gather your supplies. Now before we start, I have to say hey hey to all of my awesome subscribers and if you are a new visitor to my channel today, I hope you consider subscribing as well and stick around to enjoy this craft in all of the different ways that I will show you how to style this in your space. So now, let's just jump right into the project. Now for one shelf, we will need one 1x2 one piece of wood, and you can purchase this at the Home Depot in 8 foot lengths for about $1.54, but just be sure to check your local area's pricing. Now we will also need a 1x4, and this is also sold in 8 foot lengths at the Home Depot, and these are around $2.98 each, and for each shelf, we only need half of this board. Now for each shelf, we will need two packs of these one gallon paint stir sticks and these are 98 cents each. Now I have four here since I'll be making two shelves. Now there's a couple ways you can assemble the corners of your shelf. Now you can butt them up in a 90 degree angle with straight edges here and that is the easiest way. But you can also choose to cut miter corners at a 45 degree angle and I think this gives it a higher end look and you can also do this as well. Now to manually cut your miter corners, you can use a miter box. Now these are easy to find at most home improvement stores and they cut straight and angled corners. Now in your home improvement store, they're really fairly expensive. You'll get your saw and you will get your box and these will range about 10 to $11. Now I cut all of my pieces with my electric miter saw. I have a Hitachi miter saw that cuts straight, beveled, and mitered corners. I've had this for about 10 years. It's $99 and actually it is still $99 under the Metabo brand and I have it linked in the description box. Now you could also reach out to your handy wood cutting section at your home improvement store to cut all of your straight cuts as well. Now for the straight cuts, you will need two long pieces at 34 inches and you'll need two shorter pieces at eight inches. Now, if you're mitering at your corners, you will need two pieces and they will also be 34 inches. And then your shorter pieces will be 11 inches. Now for your four shelves, you will need to cut four of them from your one by four at 11 inches. Now for your paint sticks, to prep these, we're just gonna cut off the handle portion of the paint sticks and they will end up being a nine inches long and that is perfect for the size of our shelf. So we're gonna start off with that mitered cornered rack and what we're gonna do is gather up our long pieces, our shelf pieces, 20 of our paint sticks and our mitered little end pieces. And I'm gonna stain these with my Mimwax Jacobian stain. Now to stain these is really fairly simple. You're just gonna take a cloth and I'm gonna cover the entire piece with the stain. Now this will include the top, the bottom, and the sides. You just wanna apply one generous layer of that stain. Make sure you get those end pieces as well because they will be showing in your final project. So this is what one of your pieces will look like a fully stained. Now you're just gonna repeat this for your other shelf pieces until they're all fully stained. So now we're gonna move on to the longer pieces. Now we're gonna stain just the sides and the fronts of these and you don't wanna stain the back or the end pieces where they'll be joined because we don't want that stain to get in the way. We're gonna stain those end pieces the same way, leaving those corners unstained. And then finally, we're gonna paint uh, or stain our paint sticks as well. We're gonna stain the side that does not have the number markings. Now we're just gonna let these sit to dry. So while those dry, we're gonna work on our second shelf and we're gonna be using all of the straight cut pieces for this assembly. 
So I'm going to start by using my grid mat to lay out all my pieces. Now to lay out all your pieces is fairly easy. We're just going to space them equally apart and place that center piece in place. Now you'll use this same guideline to assemble your stained pieces when they're dry. So just make a note of that. Now in order to, to join the pieces, I am gonna be using my Sherbonder wood stick hot glue. Now I'm only using this wood stick hot glue to temporarily join the pieces together while I work. Now you certainly can use wood glue, but keep in mind it does take a couple of hours for it to cure and we will be following up with screws. So no worries, this will be a very secure rack. Now we're going to repeat both sides by adding that Sherbonder wood stick hot glue on that short piece, joining it to the two sides as shown here. Now once that's done, I mentioned we are going to use screws, so we're going to start by drilling a pilot hole in the side of our rack. And you definitely don't want to skip this step. Drilling a pilot hole will ensure that your wood does not split when adding all of your screws. And just repeat this for all four of your corners. Now once ha you have all of your pilot holes drilled, you're gonna use uh, some screws to secure them in place. And for this project, I decided to go with some two and a half inch number eight wood screws for this project. Now I'm just gonna start by hand threading that screw in a couple of times and then using my drill to go ahead and screw it all the way into place. And once that corner is done, just repeat this for all four of your corners. And now all of your corners have their screws in place and we have a nice, a solid, a sturdy frame. So now what we're gonna do is add our paint stick pieces. So we wanna flip the frame around until we are um, have the good side down and the back side facing you. And we're gonna end up laying these paint sticks across the back, overlapping. Now that opening is eight inches, so nine inches is long enough. Now in order to space these, I am using one of those Dollar Tree um, craft sticks to space it and I'm going to just be applying those paint sticks along the back using that craft stick as a spacer. Now that spacer is about a half of an inch so you just want to make sure that you use that and make sure all of your slats are going to be even. So as you add each one of your slats with your hot glue on each end you just want to make sure you shift your spacer down as well just to make sure everything is nice and neat. Now you're just gonna repeat this process all the way down until the frame has all of the slats in place and you can see how neat and even this looks. So now what we're gonna do is work on applying our shelves to our frame. Now we're gonna determine the placement. So I'm taking my tape measure and what I decided to go with is eight inches. So I'm going to mark the first mark at eight inches, the next one at 16 inches, the third one at 24 inches, and the last one at 32 inches. Now you wanna do this on each side of the front of your frame. So here are our markings all on the front of our frame and this is where the bottom of the shelf will sit. It'll sit right on top of this marking. So what I wanna do now is drill pilot holes. I'm gonna drill a pilot hole right on top of that line in the center where the board will be laying across. And this will just help as a guide when we start to place them on our rack. And once all your pilot holes are drilled, I'm just testing out the placement and it looks good. So I'm adding some more of that Sherbonder wood stick hot glue on top of the frame, right on top of that pilot hole, laying it evenly across, making sure it's lined up with the lines. You just wanna press and hold it until it secures into place and repeat this all the way down for all four of your shelves. So now that four of your shelves are secured with the hot glue, we are gonna add screws to the back to make sure they're nice and secure. So go ahead and flip it down and I'm taking my drill and I'm just drilling right back through that pilot hole we drilled just to make sure we have a pilot hole going into the shelf this time. Now to secure the shelves in place, we will be using some two inch number eight wood screws. So I'm gonna add a one wood screw into each one of those pilot holes and just keep an eyeball on them to make sure that screw is going directly into the wood piece on the shelf. And now all of our shelves are nice and secure into place. Now in order to secure those slats a little better, I went back and added a staple into each one of those paint stick slats across the back. It's not really necessary, but I really love my pieces to be super secure. 
So now I am going to paint my piece. Now it does look awesome natural, but I am gonna paint this with some white chalk paint. Now all I'm gonna do is to add a one to two nice coats of this chalk paint. It's up to you. I really wanted my rack to have a kind of weather distress look so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you're gonna apply this to the entire rack and when it's applied, you wanna let it completely dry. So now that it is dry to touch, we can actually continue work on our distressing part of the project. Now I just wanted to do some light distressing, so I'm taking some of this chocolate brown color acrylic paint and what I'm going to do is take a fine paintbrush and I'm just going to add some manual lines and chipping looks around the edge. I just wanted to make it look like some of, some of the bare wood was showing through there, emphasizing it on the corners and some of those slats in the middle. It's all up to you how you want to apply this and that's the wonderful thing about distressing because it's really random and it doesn't not have to be perfect you just do it to your heart's content so here is what my light distressing looks like on my rack so once that's done we're going to go ahead and flip it over and we're going to add some hangers to it now I actually really love these D style hangers here. I got these from Amazon. I will link these in the description box. I think they do a great job of supporting heavier projects and they're really inexpensive. So I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna add it to the upper corner on the back and mark the uh, holes with a pencil. Now the screws we use with this are very small, so you can just drill the slightest little pilot hole if you want to, but actually you really don't, don't even have to do that since the screws are small, but I was just taking some precautions. And then I'm just gonna manually screw that screw in with a screwdriver. And then repeat this on the other side until both of your hangers are in place. So now that that's done, you can decorate. So here is the distressed white shelf decorated for my space and I love how this turned out. Now I think that this would be perfect for a farmhouse style theme and I've chosen some of my favorite decor pieces to add. Now these shelves have plenty of room for your different types of decor and I love how sturdy it is. Now if you're more into arts and crafts, this shelf would be great to display your supplies too. I love that these shelves hold heavier containers without a problem and you can see all of the labels easily. Now this makes it super easy to grab and go and also adds a little punch of color to your space. So now that we've finished that one, we're ready to go on to our stained shelf and all of our pieces are now dried. We have our long pieces, our wood paint sticks, our end pieces, and we have our shelves. Now we're gonna assemble this the same way we did as the white shelf. And so through the magic of video, we have a completed shelf. Now I really love this Jacobian stain. It really does wonders on very cheap cuts of wood and it turned out amazing. Now this is the shelf that we chose to do those mitered corners on and this is what they look like and I just think it really gives it a higher end look. And now we can decorate this piece. And here we have it. And I decided to go with kind of a modern boho look for this shelf and I absolutely love it. Now I'm a huge fan of all of these natural textures and the beautiful tone of the wood stain really enhances this look. Now you can add all of your own special touches that make this unique and the possibilities on how to decorate this shelf are limitless. And of course, using this in the bathroom would be a wonderful idea as well. Now,
Now I really love how clean this looks with the black and white and the touches of greenery really give it a spa like feel. Now this will be perfect for extra washcloths or you can even add some folded towels. Everybody needs those extra rolls of TP and the other little odds and ends in jars are always helpful too. Now these are just a few ideas I wanted to share, but I would love to know how would you use this shelf in your space? Let me know in the comments below. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Craft DEE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. If you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you all next time.